am Kate Hahn with TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider. Welcome to the buzz on Yellow Jackets. Today we're talking about episode seven with Simone Kessel, who plays the adult Lottie. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. How exciting. Yeah, well, this is quite an exciting episode uh, where a therapy session goes in a very surprising direction. That's a huge, like heart stopping moment of, of this episode. Lottie sees the antler queen. Her, her therapist transforms into the antler queen. So is this definitive proof that Lottie is not the antler queen as so many people have speculated? That's a really great question. I think Lottie's visions are really coming back at speed when we see her in 207. And as, as I've sort of said previously, <clears throat> it, we're completely in the unravel, <clears throat> excuse me, of Lottie. Um, we're complete, she's come apart, she's come apart. And the, the most haunting vision for her is the Antler Queen because it really represents what happened to these women. And to me, the, the Antler Queen is all of them. To me, the Antler Queen is, is, is in Lottie's heart and it was their survival symbol and how they got through, a bit like when people are in hard times and they find Jesus. And, but for now, so Lottie's seeing that the therapist a is not there and B is the antler queen represents everything. And I think that's the major turning point for Lottie in the series. And then we go from there. So all the scenes we've seen previously with the therapist, this was actually her imagination and she was talking to this antler queen figure. All the scenes, I, I believe that the backstory for that was that Lottie was in therapy, but she has been off her medication and yes. not seen a therapist for some time. Um, and so in her routine and in her world, she was going and sitting and having that, that session. However, none of those sessions were real. Now, I just want to preface this with when we did the first psychiatrist scene, I truly believe she was real. And it wasn't till the second one, they said, oh, something about, what? well, she's not real. And I said, sorry, who's not real? And they said, well, the therapist is not real. And I was like, she's real. And they're like, just go with that then. Just go with that. And I got the, what, she was a wonderful actress who played the therapist. And we sat and we really worked it. And each director had a different take on how the therapy scenes were going to play out. And so in this episode, when we see that, she is indeed not there. It's in Lottie's head. We really we really see into Lottie's new world, her fractured world. And I guess that's the arc of the season for my character for adult Lottie was that she, you know, we see this glorious, strong woman who is, is you know, a guru or a, a spiritual leader. And then as the show progresses, everything comes back because how would you continue to live in the present day without having what's happened in your past come and revisit. And I think it's, I think it's wonderful writing how they did that. You know, they just sort of drop it in, but yes, yeah, she indeed is haunted by the vision of the antler queen because of what it symbolizes. And what does it symbolize to her? It, it, it symbolizes what happened to the women. It symbolizes how they survived and what they endured at that in their time in the wilderness. And I think that's really, it's, it's such a strong symbol and it's the first time we really see it in the present day. And I think and I think Lottie was the leader of that. I think Lottie really brought it into their world and that was their survival mechanism, how they had to survive. You know, this was a symbol of hope in some ways. Well, as you said, it's a striking, very arresting vision. So tell me how that's shot. Are you sitting across from a day player who's dressed up in this incredibly creepy costume what's that like with hair coming off of it what's that like really great but well, we shot the scene as therapist and patient and then she went off and it's quite traumatic and I remember being quite traumatized by the actual scene myself and then she comes in and it's it's the night and it's winter in the middle of you know of this beautiful forest uh, location and she sits down and even thinking about it now, I got shivers and I look at her and she just gracefully sits on this chair and holds herself. And it, it really is, it's striking. And then she speaks in this voice, Lottie. And it's really kind of, it's so like intoxicating and evocative. And I remember sitting there going, this is really, really quite incredible. And then 
knowing that she didn't exist and it is all in here. And I think on the day I actually took a few photos because I want to blow it up and have it as a really incredible photographic image. But yeah, it was it was pretty incredible to work on for sure. Well, yeah, she and she says this chilling line, does a hunch that has no violence feed anyone? And that just throws Lottie completely because what is Lottie thinking when she hears that? That's my voice saying it. So we re-recorded it with my voice. And so that's what Lottie is hearing. Um, and on the day she was meant to say it, but then the director said, let's try it with your voice saying it. And that again, gives me shivers up the back of my neck. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, I think it, it means many things. It, it, it's, 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 it can mean whatever, whatever resonates to you from that line, I think. Yeah. Well, it, it seems to resonate in a, with Lottie with being afraid for the other yellow jackets who've come to stay with her because she immediately goes out to where they are and she says, I think you should all leave. <laughs> and they're sitting there with the, with the drinks and they're like, what? We're just getting together. We're having a fun night, you know, and 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 she she entertains it for a moment because it does feel nice. It feels like a sisterhood. It feels like these women have come to her world and she and she drops her guard for for that moment. But she also knows in the back of her head that we have to deal with this. You know, we have to we have to. And it's very interesting that the, the antler queen is the vision she sees and then she sees all the women together. And that to me is symbolic of all of them. The antler queen is a part of all of them. And um, yeah, I mean that she really sort of comes undone but then they have some fun and they dance and she drinks and they have some fun. And it's it's so beautifully tied in with them what's happening in the past yeah. with the other storyline. Yes. Yeah, now, now do you play Lottie as remember, because there's a lot of talk in the circle about, I think we might have stuffed some things, repressed some things. And before when I've watched the series, I've thought, okay, do they remember all these scenes that we're seeing in the wilderness or not? So do you play Lottie as remembering that pummeling she gets from Shauna, which was no holds barred, really difficult to watch? I just have to say that's such a good question because that was always my question going, when we read the script, right? We go, hold on. And I'm always very, very aware of the past story and how that would affect Lottie because she's really in touch with everything as much as she thinks or believes she is. So when it cuts back to the pummeling from Shauna, first of all, Lottie takes it. She asks for it and she takes it. That's incredibly generous and noble and, but also does it affect her in the present day? Now there is a scene, and I'm not sure if we're at it yet, where she's holding the, Sean is holding the goat. Yeah, that, that was in this episode, yeah. Two or seven, and she's holding therapy. the goat. And she breaks down and she goes, I'm not gonna kill this goat, Lottie. I'm not, I'm just, fuck you. It's that scene. Um, I did tap into what had happened to young Lottie in that moment. And the reason I did that at that time was because I believe if you have been physically abused by another human being, and as much as love and forgiveness comes into your heart, you can't help but sort of wear a few moments of, I guess, wear a few sort of moments of protection and self-preservation around that person. I, that was my take on it. Okay. So when she's standing there crying with the goat going, I just, I just, and she bursts into tears, which is beautiful work by Melanie. And we had one take at that and it was raining and it was freezing. We were breaking for Christmas actually to all fly off to go back to our homes for Christmas. And instead of Lottie touching the character of Shauna, I, I chose to stand back. So every little moment is affected in, I know in my performance by what's happened to Lottie in the past. And I purposely chose not to go to her, to hug her, to touch her, to anything. I just stoically, I, I felt love and, and compassion for her, but I did not embrace her. That's so interesting. <laughs> I've said that out loud. <laughs> that's so interesting. Well, I mean, but the thing about this episode that's so interesting too is they all have breakthroughs. 
And all the women, Lottie's breakthrough is terrifying. But the other ones have these fairly positive, I mean, there's a range. I mean, Misty realizes I could be loved, you know, and 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 Shauna realizes I've been keeping Callie at a distance because I'm afraid she's going to die, basically, like my baby in the wilderness. And then we have Ty and Van. And that's the scene that we were all waiting for, where they got together again as adults. And Ty, and Ty had had this conversation with Lottie about, you know, her family and protecting her family. And Lottie had said, you know, you can't repress this other Ty. That other Ty is a strength. Um, and then Ty takes off her wedding ring. And I thought, is she sacrificing that ring? Oh, so we're sacrificing her family at Lottie's suggestion. Is she giving up? Is she protecting her family? What's your take on that whole, what the, goes the, down between them? Oh, I think it's so wonderful because I think, I, and beautifully played by Lauren and Tawny as well, because that whole, you know, and, and that you're even asking the question means it's all working, you know, those scenes are working and they're, they're, they're jumping off the page. Um, and I love that. And we want that as the audience because there's been so much pain and trauma and hating and anger and, and like absolute chaos inside of these women. They're vibrating with it that we get a hint, a moment of just coming together and love and, and, and holding each other and just being there for each other. And that's a lovely turn and twist in the script as it undulates and also as it leads into what then is the finale. And that is in itself huge because it takes yet another turn. So again, it's, it's carefully planting these little moments and seeds so that we really emote. And I, I always think about the show as, as it's a smart person show because they take from it. We don't spoon feed these emotions and these beats. We want it and occasionally we give them, but for the most part, you're going, hold on, what? Hold on, but she just, what did she just do? But when she was younger, <gasps> so, and that's what I think is, is really getting audiences excited. That's what I believe. Right. Well, Ty and Lottie have this fascinating relationship where Lottie is the one who keeps trying to bring out what everyone else sees as dark Ty. Yes, the other, the other Ty, the other person. That's right. Why does Lottie see that other Ty as something positive? Because Lottie's whole philosophy is that you have to face the past in order to come into your truth today. You know, and I think it taps into a lot of philosophies of present day therapy as well. And so I think she's absolutely saying at this point, you need to address who that was in order to be free of that person, that other you. And, and maybe you need to embrace parts of that because that other you was strong. She was courageous, she was generous and she was present. So perhaps it's a little criticism of present day Ty that she's so caught up in her own shit <laughs> that maybe she could draw something, some inspiration, some some something from her former self and that her former self wasn't all that bad so maybe if she acknowledges her former past then to the present she won't have these terrible visions because she's pushing them down a lot like Lottie and that's Lottie's it's very gracious of Lottie to give Ty that advice when her inner turmoil is like oh my god what is happening for me but she sees that in herself and they're the only two characters that really have these strong visions and you know Lottie's is self-sacrifice and and ties is you know dirt eating and 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 completely not being you know a duality so I think Lottie and giving the advice to Ty is actually taking that on herself as well I think well it's interesting because in this episode the young Lottie says at one point you know um wilderness doesn't work you know by a barter system it will it gives us stuff we asked it to save shauna and it saved shauna however in this present day timeline we've seen lottie cut her hand bleed into the earth it seems like she now thinks sacrifices must be made um how had why did she change from that young lottie who sort of had a more idealistic version of what this wilderness was to one who really seems to think there's a, there's almost, death is almost asked for, blood is almost asked for. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure because, you know, I, we get given these scripts and then we get given a new director for each episode. And then I often have a tendency, which I need to change, of bombarding the new director and going, so, you know, and they're like, 
what? Hold on, why do you, what? And I was like, so in that, and I'm, I'm such a nerdy actor. I've got pages of notes. I've got, you know, notes stuck to my wall. I'm that actress and scribbled on every script and I've got my binder. And, and so I will bombard these poor directors coming in for one episode with all of these questions. And obviously, you know, the writers are so busy and we've got new writers for most episodes. So sometimes I'm always questioning why my character is choosing to do that when this had happened in the past. And I think a lot of the explanation for Lottie's maniacal extreme choices as the season finishes is simply because she there is nothing else we can do. Every time there is a sacrifice in the past, good things come. And clearly all these women are experiencing bad, terrifying moments in their lives. So the only option is to make a sacrifice like we did in the past. And so that symbol going right back to when I see the antler queen represents that is the way. And that's why she's so terrified because she realizes the antler queen is saying, you need to make that sacrifice. So it sounds like not everyone is safe in this complex. <laughs> Um, um, I, I, not really, not really without giving too much away past 207. Um, not, not really. I mean, but it's, it's, you know, Lottie isn't out with a knife trying to kill anybody or anything, but, um, it definitely ramps up and I'm not sure if you've seen the finale, but we, we get there. And so that's ah, very exciting. <laughs> No, I mean, it is very exciting. Look, everyone's obsessed. People watch the show frame by frame. They break everything down. You know, do you I have fans who make all these amazing little videos, montages? And I was like, where is that moment? And you're right. They sit there and they get frame by frame and they cherry pick all these moments and compile them together. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, like people are obsessed by this. And that's why I think we have to give them respect by saying here is more and untangle this cord and see what comes from it, you know? Um, yeah, but it's an, it's a very long piece of string. That's for sure. It's a very long piece of string. Um, I did want to talk about shooting that scene where they're all so joyful. I mean, that actually looked like such a fun scene to shoot. You know, they run outside and there's the snow and they're drinking. It's like this great collection of actresses on screen I mean, tell, what time of night were you shooting that? Oh, we, were were you shooting all? Late, we were shooting it late at night. And we actually really did have fun because for most of the season, we're all apart. Right. So where we filmed the location uh, for Lottie's compound is a good hour's drive out of Vancouver. And you get there and you the base is way down the road and then you drive down the steep little, you know. And so you get there and you really feel that community and that and that beautiful kind of isolated world. And all of us sitting in the green room together, we're laughing, we're playing games, we're fo taking photo. We, you know, we're just having a ball because these are six women. Most of us are parents. Most of us have, you know, we've all been around for a long time. And so when we got to do that, everyone was very much like, so what's the song gonna be? What's the song, you know? And then we were all like, we can't dance to that. And Juliet was so great and so funny. She's like, that is not a song I want to dance to. Like this. She was like, what? What? And I was like, come on, Juliet, because she's such a rock and roll chick and she can dance, right? She's a really great dancer. And so I was like, come on, how are we going to dance? And she's like, oh, fuck, I don't know, like this. But then when they put it on all the speakers, everyone, we all got into it. I just had, we had a ball. And the way they shot it with the camera above, and the fire and we we're all just dancing around and rocking out and it was so cold um it was so much fun because we we're always so you know there are such heavy beats in this show that we got to actually be free and spirited and so then I just went into a different type of Lottie that you know that Woodstock Lottie that dancing that kind of vivacious alive kind of feeling and then how you know horrific it is then being cut back to young Lottie being completely bashed up by uh, the the Shauna character. So, <gasps> yeah. And so we really wanted that sort of very different moment in present day to just celebrate we're survivors. We made it through and we're all together. 
Yeah. And I mean, that song is from 1994. So some of us remember <laughs> freely dancing around late at night, maybe in a field somewhere to that song. Right. With maybe some lubrication of some sort. Yes. <laughs> and, and I love it. And, you know, I was so happy. I love dancing. So I was having an absolute ball and I'm like, Simone, stay in character. But um, <laughs> don't go too far out of your world of character. But yeah, no, it was such a joy to film for sure. Well, I, I'll, cl I'll close with this at the end of the episode, which is called Burial, which is the perfect title because we see Shauna bury her baby. Then we are starting to have all these things unearthed emotionally with the women. And then at the very end, we learn, oh, the body of this man that Shauna murdered and the other women helped her hide or get rid of has been found. And Lottie knows nothing about this. Lottie and Van know nothing about this. Lottie and Van know nothing about this. Yeah. And so that's, that's exactly, and that's a really important note because when Van is like, what is going on with, there's your turning point again between those two characters. And Van is like, what is going on with these women? So when Lottie is like, we can't fix this. This isn't something therapy is going to fix. The only way we survived today is because of the sacrifices we made back then. Because you're all, you've all lost it. You may think I'm the crazy one, but you're out there killing people and you're out there, you know, Misty, you did actually kill somebody. And Julia, I mean, Natalie, you tried to blow your brains out. Like these women are fundamentally fucked. <laughs> You know, and so the only way out. And so it's Van and Lottie who really kind of come together and be like, what has been going on for you guys? So that's the that's a really good point. That's a really an incredible moment where Van and Lottie are like, OK, something big needs to happen here for change. OK. All right. Well, we look forward to, to seeing how all of this goes down. I think, as you said, it's just going to build and build and build. I know it's insane, but um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for your lovely questions as well. It's, it's insane. And that's why we love it, Simone. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care.